Hello, everybody. My name is Yaakov Fein. Thank you for coming, 6 p.m., and you're still here. And we'll talk about Angular, Angular for Java developers. Uh, I do Java for 18 years, and the last three, four years I do front-end as well, and Angular latest version for more than two years. Today, today's version is version 5 of Angular, and this is what we're going to be using in this presentation. Currently, I also work on the second edition of this book. This book is available only as a MIAP program as we write uh, chapters. Manning publishes them. So this is a discount code if you want. I also have two discount codes for 100% off for people who will ask good questions. All the, all the slides and everything is available online. I'll show you the, the site. And you don't need to take pictures of this because it's already there. Couple of words about Angular in general. Uh, this presentation has almost no slides. So what I will do, I'll show you a couple of slides and then we'll switch and we'll work, we'll work on an application. We'll be building application today. So if anybody has a laptop with you and you want to turn this presentation into a workshop, fine. If you want to have more slides, yesterday I delivered a longer version of this uh, talk for three hours almost uh, as a deep dive and the video will be available and the slides and instructions are also there. So you can kill two birds with one stone. So Angular is a component-based framework released in 2016, in September, has nothing to do with AngularJS. It's a different framework, basically. And this framework that makes a lot of sense to me as a Java developer, and it's easier to understand to me and hopefully to you as well. It's a component base, as I said. Every app is a bunch of components. It has declarative templates. By templates, I mean UI, HTML. You will be writing code in TypeScript. Language is very similar to Java. And you don't need to write JavaScript at all, unless you decide to use somebody else's existing library, which is also a good thing. Dependency injection is there. So the framework instantiates classes for you and inject them into a component. What is a class? It's a piece of business logic that you will write. Just a class and you put business logic in there. What is a component? It's also a class, but with UI. It has excellent router for client-side navigation. Angular is a good fit for single-page apps. What does it mean? It means that on every click, we don't make a request to the server and we don't refresh the entire page. Only certain portion of the page will be changed. And router will navigate the user within the existing code on the client. It uses actively and in many places Reactive programming, and in particular, a library RxJS, is integrated, or actually it comes with the Angular. If you know the, these concepts like observer, observables, operators, and so on, it's there. And as I said, you can write apps in TypeScript or JavaScript, but recommended and preferred way is TypeScript, and this is what we usually do. When you look at a website, you need to ask yourself, Say we want to develop Twitter in Angular, or a web designer gives you some design. You need to look at the site and you need to ask yourself, what components are there? How can I split this page into multiple components? And you, you come up with something like this. When you have a top level component, a bunch of ch child components, for example, up on top you have a navigation bar, it's a separate component. On the left-hand side, I have a profile, a separate component, trends. Uh, for, for the new tweet, I can create a new component, and for the existing ones, another one, and so on. By the way, do you know that you can now use 280 characters in Twitter? I tested this morning, it worked. And do you know who is very happy about it? Anyone? Exactly, our president, President Trump, should be happy today. 
It's like money from home, you know, 280 characters. Well, it's not a political talk, guys. Let's concentrate on Angular. And when the user click on a menu item, we want to change something within the page. Not the entire page, but something within the page. And there is an area, every app will have an area called router outlet. So within that area that you will designate, you will show one component or the other. Like on the previous slide, I showed uh, several tweets, but if you click on the notifications on top, then this area will be replaced and something else will be rendered. But just remember the concept, router outlet. We will configure routes and we will designate the area for changing parts, so to speak, fragments. And what's, what we're going to be doing today, we will create this app, like a little online store, which has a toolbar on top. These gray rectangles represent images. I'm just using a, a handy website called placehold.it. You can uh, specify a URL and say, give me a rectangle of this size. So instead of putting images, it's very useful for demo. And there's some description of the product. I will be using JSON data. When you will click on the, on the title of the product, it'll show a different page under the toolbar, uh, showing details for this product. That's the goal. On the server, for this presentation, I'm going to be using Spring Boot app. So Spring Boot will be serving JSON data about product, and Angular will be showing the data. So this app will be talking to Spring Boot. And one last thing before I will switch to, the, uh, to creating this app. We will have this setup. Angular comes with an excellent tool called Angular CLI. Angular CLI generates for you a project, and we'll do it now. Besides that, it comes with a little dev server with hot reloads. So we start the app, and we keep working. We keep changing code. As soon as I change the code, this little server, this CLI dev server, automatically rebuilds the bundles. And the bundle is a bunch of uh, files that are broke together. Your, your app may have 100 files or 500 files. We don't want to deploy all of them on the web server. So we will be bundling them into small number of files, and the web server will be serving it. By default, it serves on the port 4200, our Angular app. And if we want to hit the server, in my case, it will be Spring Boot, that runs on port 8080, if I will be trying to do this directly from the client, I will be violating something that is known as same origin policy. If the JavaScript piece comes uh, from this server and this port, it can only talk back to this server, the same server, unless the other server will uh, prepare special headers, which may not be uh, the case in many cases. In dev mode, this is what we will do. We will create a little proxy file and it'll be sitting in the front end, in the, in the Angular app. And we'll say, whenever the, the URL the, has a fragment API, slash API, we will be saying this to the CLI dev server, redirected to the uh, server that runs on port 8080. When the app is ready, of course, you will build the bundles and you will deploy them right in your Spring Boot app. So after that, in production, you don't need this uh, dev server, so you'll be hitting directly the server on port 8080. It'll send you the uh, front-end app, and then it'll be talking back to the same server, getting the data. So that's the plan. I believe that's the last slide I wanted to show you. Yes, thank you. So, it, But it's, it's a bit too early for thank you. So let's start. Uh, at the bottom of each slide, you have it. Maybe I should bring it back. GitHub.com, Yfain, it's my ID, slash my store. If you go there, then you will have instructions that I will be using now to build this app. You'll find slides in there as well, plus the working app, both server and the client. So what I will do now, I will open up these instructions. 
and I will run it like as if it's a workshop. I will be taking pieces and I will be explaining what I'm doing from the instructions and then we'll slowly, gradually, we'll build the app. And we have still 40 minutes for this, it should be enough. First of all, you need to install Node.js on your computer if you want to work with Angular. It's a standard tool that is used by most of the JavaScript developers. There is a repository called nodejs.org where all packages are published, all JavaScript packages, and maybe not all, but most of them, open source packages, are there. It's similar to Maven Central. So we'll be installing stuff from uh, nodejs.org. When you will install Node.js, it comes with NPM. NPM is a package manager that can install things from a central repository or maybe from GitHub. Think of it as Maven. So Maven is a command line tool, right? So you would be writing MVN and something. In, in this world, you'll be writing NPM, install, whatever you want to install. So after you download and install Node.js, you already have NPM installed. And you have a new command on your command prompt NPM. So that's the first part. After you do this, you will need to install this Angular CLI by running this command on your command line. npm install at Angular CLI, that generator that will create your initial project and later on can help you with builds and can generate other components. And minus G at the end means install it globally. Why? Because you need this generator for multiple projects. So that, of course, I have these two steps done. I have Node.js and I have installed Angular CLI. Uh, for the IDE, you can use one of many. I am using WebStorm or IntelliJ. They support nicely both Angular and TypeScript. You can use Visual Studio Code, excellent IDE, free, open source. You can use different editors, so support is great for TypeScript. So what, what do we start with? We start with the we're starting the server, Spring Boot Server. If you will download this entire uh, directory from GitHub, you will have a folder. And in that folder, you will have in particular, you will have a subfolder called Angular for Java Devs. One level above, there is a, there is a set of files called Angular Applied. That's a three-hour workshop that I was running yesterday in slides. But we are interested in this directory Mm. Angular for Java Devs. Slides are there. I have a version of this app that I will be building ready to go. And I have a server, this server that we will start now, the Spring server. So if, um, if you will try to run instructions, which are here in the HTML file, and if you run into an issue, you can always try to run that example. But I will be building a new app from scratch in this folder. But first, let me show you the server. The server is pretty simple. The Spring server, it has a controller. And in that controller, I have my little database of products, six of them. See this? This is my database. And I have two APIs, two REST endpoints, actually. One of them is, let me do this down first one. If, if somebody will hit the server with slash product in the URL, with a GET request, it'll be redirected to this method, and I will be just returning array of products, as is, that I have, hard-coded values. If somebody will hit this server with the URL which has product slash and a value, like product ID 0 or 1 or 2, then it'll be directed here, and we find the matching product in the array, and we'll return just one product. That's the REST API that we'll be using. Start to start the server, you can start it right from the ID, or you can start it from the command line using using this command MVM Spring Boot Run. Hopefully the server started. Let me let me check. If I will go to the to the browser, local host on port 8080 slash API products. Yes, it works. See, it responds. So I have the I have the JSON for my product. 
to see it a bit nicely, you, you can use this tool called JSON Lint online, copy paste, and you will see what data I have. See, all these products are there. So this, the back end is ready, it works. So we will concentrate on the front end in Angular that will hit this back end. So let's go back to instructions and let, let's do this. Now the client portion. For this client, I'm going to be using for the UI, I'm going to be using a library which is super popular in the JavaScript world. It's called Bootstrap. As a matter of fact, there are different UI libraries that you can use for creating nice looking UIs. We use for real world project, we try to use um, a library called Angular Material. Angular Material, Material and the library Flex Layout allows you to create a really nice modern looking UI and Flex Layout allows you to make a UI responsive and uh, simplifies uh, allocation of your controls on the screen. I work as a consultant, so if the client wants something else, if you do something else, for example, Bootstrap, or uh, there are other libraries as well, as I said. So, in this case, I will be using, as I said, Bootstrap, and the toolbar that you see over, over here, for example, that toolbar is the toolbar from the Bootstrap that they are offering, Bootstrap 4. Under the toolbar, I have a bunch of components, six of them. One component represents one product, and the name of this component will be product item. When I will click on this product, it will show me the different, uh, different component showing product detail. All these six icon, items, six instances of the component, will be sitting inside the home component. Inside the home component, I'm going to loop through products that I received from the back end through the array, and for each of them, I will render one product item, six of them. That's the plan. Now let's do it. Yeah, and this is a product detail that we want to, to, to create. So, first of all, I want to generate a new project. As I said, I will be using the uh, package called Angular CLI. When you install it, you, you're going to get the ng command on your command prompt. Then you do ng, new, and the name of the project you want to create. And it'll create a directory with this name, and it'll generate a whole bunch of files and install all dependencies required from the uh, npmjs.org. So what I will do, I will go to command line. I already have my store in here. So what I will do, I will create a new project, my store devox, for example, right in the same level. So we are in this folder. So what I will do, I will do ng new my store devox. It'll generate all these files. All these files are generated, but what it does now, now it runs npm install. The, uh, the projects in JavaScript, in many JavaScript projects, and in particular in Angular, they will have a file called package.json. It's similar, you can think of it as a POM XML in the Java world. It lists all dependencies that are required. The Angular itself is there, plus uh, some other dependencies. And uh, we'll open up this project, and I'll show you what's in there. Meanwhile, it's still installing. Let me do this. I will go to WebStorm. It's also a product of JetBrain. I will open up this folder that was just generated, uh, which, is, which is where? Devox. It's somewhere here. Belgium. Angular for Java developers. And I don't see it here. Apparently, I was in the, in the wrong directory, I guess. I, I, I might have been in the directory one level above. See, it's not here. Oh, no, it is here. It's in the angle right. Let me try again. Uh, open. English for Java developers. Uh, my store. Devox. Yes, it is here. So let me open it up. The, the project, I guess, yeah, it was already generated and all dependencies were installed already. So now we are in Web Store. I'll open it up, just show you a couple of things. The project is ready and the package JSON is this. 
As you can see, I'm using version 5 of Angular. It was released uh, 10 days ago. Difference between 4 and 5 minimum. I mean, the performance improvements are there. The size, the size of the files is smaller, but in terms of migration, it's very easy. So the dependency section of the package JSON shows you the dependency that must be in the deployed app in production. The dev dependency section of package JSON is a list of dependencies that must be present on the developer's machine. They don't need for production. For example, there's a whole bunch of unit test files, library Jasmine, Karma is a test runner. At the, at the end, you see TypeScript. TypeScript will be compiled into JavaScript. Browsers don't know what TypeScript is, and they will never know. So our app, we will be writing it in TypeScript. It will be compiled into JavaScript, bundle up, and the browser will receive JavaScript code. So obviously, for production machining, you don't need it. A couple of words about TypeScript. You will see some examples, but it was created, I believe, five years ago uh, in at, at Microsoft, and that the author... Anders Heilsberg is the same guy who, who designed C Sharp, for example. Delphi, I believe Turbo Pascal as well is his. So really well-designed language. Uh, two, two years ago, probably not many people even knew about this language, but now based on um, Stack Overflow Dev uh, survey, it's third most loved language. So anyway, so that's the package JSON. Also, one other thing, we have an SFC directory that was generated for us. It generated for us app module and app component. App component, in this case, consists of four files. .ts is TypeScript. Uh, .spec.ts is, it generates for you unit test if you want, because they like boilerplate for the unit test for this app component. Then it has a file for HTML, and it has file for CSS. You don't have to have four files for a component. You may have inline CSS, inline HTML, but it still offers you clean separation between TypeScript code and the UI. Also, it generated for me a module, app module. That's the file. This file lists all components and services that you want to have in a module. A module will be, will be bundled in a... So in, as a separate unit for deployment. In the declaration section, as we generate more components, we'll keep adding them, comma separated. So whatever components you want to belong to this module, you will list them in the declaration section. Also, a module may depend or need other modules. In this case, I, I write for the browser, so that's why I need to import browser module. Uh, if I decide to work with HTTP, I will add HTTP client module. If I want to work with forms, for example, I will add forms modules. All of them will be coming here. So what else I want to say? Yes, there is a file called angular.cli.json. It's a configuration file for the project. In particular, if you want to bring in other JavaScript libraries, which I, which I will do now, I want to bring Bootstrap. It's a Twitter, Twitter styling library. I need to bring styles, CSS files, from Bootstrap. And Bootstrap happened to depend on two other JavaScript libraries, jQuery and Popper. I'm talking about Bootstrap 4. So I will need to add in my configuration file, in the section hmm. styles, I will need to add one extra line for Bootstrap CSS. And in the section scripts, which is empty now, I will add those dependent JavaScript libraries. And then go we'll start it. So, and this is exactly what I wrote in the, in the manual. Replace, in the English shell, I replace the style section with this. This is exactly what I'm doing now. The style section I'm replacing because I need bootstrap. Save. Now, the script section I also replaced based on what they wrote in, in the manual for the bootstrap. I replace it. As you can see, I include files from the directory called node modules. Whenever you run npm install in the project, it creates for you a folder called mm, no, node modules. 
inside your project. That's why I'm referring to. I still did not install Node.js, right? So, you, so this, this would, would give me an error during the runtime. So I need to install it. So typically, we work with the terminal window inside the ID, so I, so I don't need to go back and forth to the command line. So I will run npm command to install Bootstrap, uh, which I want to use in this particular project. Once again, it's, it was just my, my choice to do this. Where do I have this npm install here? I don't, I don't see it. Oh, over here, yes. So I want, I want to say I want to do npm i. i is short for install. I want to install uh, Bootstrap, jQuery library, and Popper.js. J as they need it for pop-ups. And save prod means not only install it, but add lines to the dependency section of the package JSON. So next time I can just run npm install it and these guys will be in the list already. So that part is done. They are installed. And if you are open the package JSON, you can see that they are there. These three guys that I just installed for the future installation, I don't need to repeat it. So that part is done. Now, let me run the app. I want to show you that I that I go by the book, and gserve. Say it again. I missed what? Oh, you mean a copy paste there? Let me double check. Yep. Oh, this one. Sorry. Right. Yeah, thank you. All right. So ng is a command Angular CLI. When I do ng serve, it it's what? Oh, the script tags. All right, you know what? Let me do this. You know how to copy paste better than me. I can give you this. Control Z. Like this. Yes or no? No. It, this is strange. It, it shows me like as if I selected scripts, right? Now I did. That's the reason. All right. Okay. Now it's better. And the, the one above. See, this is the problem with highlighting in the Chrome. Now, hopefully, it's fine. So basically, you already know how to do the job. See, we just started the presentation and you're already helping me. Great. So, ng is a command for Angular CLI. When I do ng serve, it'll build the bundles in memory. And if I will add dash o, it'll also open up the browser for me on the port 4200. ng serve, serve dash o. I'm saying build the bundles for me and open up the browser and port localhost 4200. Let me see, it's still building. Initially, it'll spend maybe like five, 10 seconds to build, but after that, as you keep saving changes, it'll rebuild them very quickly. See this app? This is the app that was generated for us. What we will do, we will gradually replace the code in this app with our app. I will keep this server running, I will leave it alone, I will open up the second terminal window, and in there, I will mm, generate new component services. And while doing this, we will check to see if the UI is changing accordingly. So let's go by the book again. Go to the manual. So what I want to do, I want to generate several components now, and one service. I want to generate home component, navbar component, I want to generate product item components within the home component. I will see the six product items. And when I click on the item, I want to use product detail component. I'll keep using Angular CLI for generating those. And G, G, G is for generate. C is for component. I could have written it in a long way. Generate component home. Minus spec false means I don't want to generate a unit test code. So first of all, I will open up the second terminal window, and I will do this ng, ng home, 
it generated for me files, TS file, HTML, CSS, and it updated the module file. If I will look at the module file, you will see that it added home component over here. It wasn't there before, right? So now I will do, I will do navbar, product item, and product detail the same way. Uh, arrow up, and then I will do navbar. Then I will do product item. Of course, it's it's going to be boilerplate code, but it creates a folder for each of these components with all these files. It updates the uh, module for me, so it's it's still pretty useful. And uh, the product detail. If you will click over here, you will see that now I have additional folders. See home, now bar, uh, product detail, and product item. That's great. Once again, a product is, sorry, a component is a class annotated with a decorator. Or in Java, we call it annotation, but in TypeScript, they call it decorators. So check it out. I have a component class. It's TypeScript. It implements interface on an int and this class is annotated with the decorator component at component which has inside selector the name that you are allowed to put in angle brackets in other code template url is where your html is styles url is where your css is and there is something else encapsulation which I will not cover now. It's about Shadow DOM, how to encapsulate CSS within the DOM of the browser. I just don't have time for this. And the, as a matter of fact, it's not needed here, this line. So next, I want to generate a service. What for? To get the data. What will happen is we will use the service, inject it into component. The service takes care of the data, gives it us and we invoke the service from the component and update the UI. That's the plan. Since we are planning to use this service uh, in two places, in home page and in pro detail page, I will generate it in a shared folder. And this is what it says. NG, G, again generate. And now I use the letters S, or you can say service. Where? In the shared folder, I want to call it product. And I also had minus M module because I want to update something called providers. Dependency injection in Angular needs to know how to instantiate. Is it, is it supposed to be just an instance of a class that you specify product service? Or you want to use a factory function? Or maybe you want to inject a value? There are different ways to do this. So I will, I will generate this service. And later on, and later on, once again, highlight doesn't work. I don't understand why. I think I highlighted. Command V. Now it created a, a folder shared for me with this boilerplate code. It has nothing in there. We will replace this code. And the final thing that we want to add in the module, we want to add router configuration. When you develop an app, uh, that will need routing, and pretty much every app needs routing, so navigation for the user. You need to add router module to your root module. Router in the import section of the root module. In this case, what I do, I do, I map. I map, I'm saying, if after the server portion URL you have nothing, render home component. If you, ha you have a fragment in the URL product slash value, render product detail component. That's all there is to it. I go to the app module, and in the import sections, I add my router. IID helps me out. It says I don't know what it is. What is router? It's red. Alt enter, and it imported that thing. This is not a mistake. I, I, uh, it tells me, TSLint tells me, don't use double quotes, use single quotes. I didn't change it in my IDE. I didn't change the setting. All right, so routes are configured. Now let's try to see if we can 
uh, start adding components. As I said, app components is a top root component, super um, top level component. So what do we want to have? We want to have a nav bar on top and underneath I want to have an area that I will designate as a router outlet. In that area I will be switching home component and the product tail component. So replace app component html with this. Let's do this. app component html was generated for us. I don't need any of these. I will replace it. Save. If I will go back to this second console, you didn't see that, but it's, it was recompiled already. Let's see if this is the case. Let me go back to my store. Yep, it works. This, uh, this text comes from generated text for the component. When I was generating components, it generated this dummy uh, HTML home navbar works, home works. So our app works. So app component knows that I need to show navbar and underneath home works. Now let's replace this dummy text navbar with something that we want. What I did for this demo, I just went to um, Bootstrap site and they give you the whole bunch of different components. I picked in there um, the Bootstrap, uh, the navbar. If you follow this link, you will see this code. And this is exactly what I will be using. I will not be changing even one line. I just want to show you that, the, that you can use it from Bootstrap. I go back and I need to go to navbar component now and replace its HTML. It has navbar works, not anymore. All right, save. See, it recompiled recompile the code. I go back. Let me see how my app looks like. Nice. You see a toolbar up there? That's the toolbar from Bootstrap. Of course, you need to customize it at the menu, provide clicks and so on. But it is working fine. Now home component. Mm. Do I need to do anything else? No, nothing with, with, with navbar. Uh, no, I want to generate product service first. If you remember, our Spring Boot server sends us products, right, JSON. And the, did I show you that the class in the Spring Boot service, I have the class product, and that, that's the structure of this class. And on the front end, I, I, I'm going to get the same structure. So what I do here, I, I want to generate a new class, product.ts new TypeScript file. I'll call it product.ts, you, you don't need to write it down. And I will copy, um, copy the interface. I want to define my type as interface, as TypeScript interface. I could have defined it as a class, but interface in this case just save me some, um, it, it will save me some uh, space or make the size of the generated code smaller. I was explaining this in the yesterday presentation. If you want, you can watch it. We just don't have time. I have 12 minutes and we need to finish the app. So that's kind of a value object, a type for the value object that will be uh, returned to us by the Spring server. And now the product service, we have, we have the service generated. By the way, see it is marked as injectable. So Angular will properly inject it into components. So we want to replace the code of the product service with this. Uh, what do we do? In this class, we want to say, I'm planning to use HTTP client. HTTP client is Angular object that knows how to talk to the servers. Whenever you put something in the constructor of the class, it means that you want injection. We are basically, this line says, just give me the object, the instance of HTTP client, so I can use it. You don't need to use a new statement because it's already there. And what I do, I start using it right away. See the variable HTTP client, I'm saying HTTP client get, I am expecting product, I am saying hit the endpoint API slash API slash product. This is what we have in the Spring Boot server. And the second API on the front end, I have get product by ID. This guy is hmm, to, to pick a particular, particular product, just one. So what I will do, I will just take this code. I'll take this code as is. 
and I will copy it over and I will replace the generated product service with this code. See again, copy paste. All right, so that's my product service on the client. Recompiled, rebuilt. We don't, we won't see anything different because we, we didn't use this product service yet. Next, next, we want to use it, right? Uh, one other thing, since I say I'm saying in this HTTP in this service that I am planning to work with HTTP, I need to declare it in the module. HTTP is a module of itself, so I want to say in my main root module that I am going to use HTTP client. So um, I can copy paste, or it's better to type, because I will make a mistake that way. HTTP client, see, uh, ID helps you out, does the imports and everything. So I said I'm going to use HTTP client module. So we're done with that. Now, product item component. One component that's supposed to show me, render the, mm, the product item. The product item component is right there. What do we have here? What do we have there? We are saying that you, product item component, it's a class, by the way, you will get a product given to you through the at input property. At input property is a way how the parent can pass the data to the child. So this product knows, will, should know how to render it. For now, it's just the TypeScript code, and in a minute I'll show you the, um, the HTML. I will replace the generated code with mine. I don't understand what's going on with this Chrome. It behaves weird. All right, this part is almost there. All right, now it's clean. HTML for the product item. I'm using standard tags from HTML5. There is a tag called figure, which allows you to show an image with some description. Product item component HTML. Done. Now, now, that's pretty much it. And home component. My home component will have, will render a bunch of product item components, right? So, Let's uh, use let's use it here. Let me copy paste and then I'll explain you what I'm doing. Home component. It's right there. I don't need this generated code. What I, what am I doing here? Space is missing. That's fine. So what I'm saying here, look at this. In the constructor, I specified product service, meaning I want to inject the product service. I'm, I'll be using it. That product service will hit the bootstrap server. And then after the constructor, Angular call special lifecycle hook method and G on init. In there, I invoke on that service, I invoke get products method. And for HTML, in the HTML, I want to say, I'm going to get some number of products. I don't know how many. I ha I'll have them in this array. I want to loop through the array of products, and for each one, I want to render certain uh, uh, certain thing. So what I will do, that's the code. ng4 in Angular, special structural directive, says, loop through the products. Let product, it's, I declare a loop variable. And for each of them, render app product item. App product item is my product item. The selector name that was generated is app product item. That's why I can use it like a regular HTML tag. That's pretty much it. Loops through this and generate for me the, pro the product. Let me go and see if something changed. So my store devox, 
I see an empty screen. I used to have homeworks, at least. Not anymore. That's a bad sign. If you see an empty screen, it means that there is an error. And if you go to the console, you'll see an error 404. I knew about this error, and it's in the instruction, why it happens. The app, this app was brought to me from the uh, web dev server that runs on port 4200, right? I'm hitting back the server on port 4200 saying, give me product, right? And it says, I don't know what it is because my products are in the Spring Boot server, right, on port 8080. So what I will do, I will create a little file, a little proxy saying, whenever the, whenever the URL has a slash API in there, redirect it to the other server that runs on port 8080. To do that, I will need to generate a new file, a new file, a little file which uh, defines the proxy. I will create a file proxyconf.json and in there I will, let me show you what, it's, what will be in there. I will just specify this redirect. I will go to the very root. In the root I will create a new file, new file, a proxy. You can call it anything you want. conf.json and once again, I missed, I missed the API. What I'm saying is, whenever the, you see API, slash API in the URL, it redirected to that local host 8080. Don't worry about security. I'm in development mode. I'm, I'm running the same server. So now, to, to, to make this work, I need to say that I want to restart this app using this file, this proxy, ng serve, and there, there is a special keyword proxy config, and I, you specify the name of the file that you could just configure, proxy conf.json. Let's do minus o. Actually, I, I already have that window open. Let it rebuild the package with the use of that proxy and then I will go and uh, hit the same developer server on port 4200 again. These are the errors from my previous, uh, I killed that server. See then, I have the app running. The, all the data that you see now were served to me by the Spring Boot server. I don't have much time left, but if you want to follow the instructions that you have, you can finish it and generate, uh, replace the code of Pro Retail Component, and when you will be clicking on the, the title of any of these, it's already linked. It'll show you the product detail. By the way, since I was using Bootstrap, it was it is already responsive design. It will allocate or reallocate the code based on the on the width of the screen. See, for example, if you go to the smaller screen like uh, smartphones, it'll rearrange the, the menu is collapsed and the allocation is uh, changed. So responsive web design is, a, is another thing that you, might, you may want to look at. So uh, at the end of this file, instructions file, you also see instructions how to deploy the server. This is for retail component but at the end, how to deploy. It's also not difficult. You need to add several scripts, several scripts in the package.json.com. And then the bundles will be built. What I did now, I did not generate actual files. When I did ng-surf, all bundles were generated in memory. For dev mode, it's useful and it's uh, fast. We don't need files. But when you will be deploying, you will be doing ng-build. In G build. It, it'll optimize the app, create the files, and we can write a little script that will copy the files under the Spring Boot server. So this is pretty much it. This is what I wanted to say. I have like a minute uh, for questions, or I can stay, you can ask me later. Do you have any questions? Anyone? Yes. 
Can we ha can we have multiple routers on the page? Yes, the answer is yes. They are called secondary or auxiliary outlets. You just keep, have to give them names. Yes. Very good question. Uh, by the way, you, you, both of you will get this code if you want for the 100% discount of the ebook. Uh, should you have one or multiple modules? Definitely split your code into multiple modules. Angular supports so called root modules like, that we ha have, but realistically, we would have so called feature modules. For example, shipping module building module and so on. Angular support so-called lazy loading. If you want, you can lazily load some modules. Only if the user will click on the menu, then you will bring the code. A uh, pretty flexible and powerful thing to, uh, to do. What you, what you should do in the real world project, you should create the, the root module as small as possible. Only the core functionality of your app should be there. Uh, and then uh, the user will quickly see the app. The rest will come from the feature module. And there are different um, policies for laser loaded. You can create preloaders, and it can load them in the background, and so on. All right, thank you very much for coming. If you have any questions, just stop by.